Here we are, okay. So as uh, I said 20 years ago, the insurer st uh, started to study the impact of the uh, international pandemics. And if we start, for example, with the motor vehicle insurance, so of course the number of claims uh, went down because there was uh, much less traffic. Some insurers uh, reimbursed the holders to compensate them for the less use of uh, traffic, but uh, usually the industry did not suffer from any losses. Now, the same with travel insurance. Now, uh, travel insurance also, there were uh, people canceled most of the travels, but uh, now because insurers did not want to insure against such losses, the providers like uh, airlines, hotels, and others gave the opportunity to cancel the reservation without loss in order to uh, increase the demand. Otherwise people won't make uh, any orders. So they wanted to protect the customer. So in fact, they were substitutes to the insurance. Now, the long-term care insurance is really a problem because the excess morbidity uh, brought insurers to compensate. But in fact, what they did, they just limit their sales. They uh, demanded more uh, tests and uh, they uh, tried to protect themselves against the claims. Now, the business interruptions, this uh, branch is very complicated because you know there were hundreds of thousands of lawsuits of uh, people who got a policy and the insurers uh, did not want to pay them because somehow they were trying to exclude pandemics and there were very few who really got uh, compensation after they were holding a policy and there were business interruptions, but they couldn't get any compensation. Now, uh, again, with credit insurance, because many uh, credit uh, claims were not, uh, you know, protected. And again, they were really, uh, insurers stopped selling it. I mean, they protected themselves. Now, uh, the main uh, problem is the health insurance. What would expect them to pay much more for the uh, excess morbidity, but what happened that in fact, they postponed many uh, not urgent uh, visits and the uh, surgeries and uh, they exchanged the visit, doctor visit to telemedicine and against the losses were not so uh, big because all the uh, uh, services that were not provided during the pandemics. Now, life insurance is the main problem for the insurers because of the increasing mortality. And also at the same time, the return to the assets were lower. But in fact, if we look now after uh, years of pandemics, we see that uh, most of the insurers uh, did not lose money because there was increase in the demand more people uh, face increased risk of uh, death and the demand for life insurance increased. So it compensated the losses for the excess uh, mortality. So pensions like uh, annuities, it is another uh, very interesting branch because the, on the one hand, uh, where uh, life expectancy went down, people used less. I mean, pensions were paid for less period, for a smaller period. At, at the same time, people who uh, face a shorter life expectancy, they also reduce the demand for annuities. So in fact, the pension funds faced the problem. At the same time, there were people because of the 
economic uh, problems, many people wanted to cash their pension, and then, of course, the returns to the insurance went down. So this uh, branch really suffered from losses. So, in fact, the overall uh, insurance is a, a risk, yes, is really at risk, but of course there are many regulations that protect the insurance, insurance uh, insurers, insurance companies were uh, all under regulations. In fact, in Europe, the European community set a very strict regulations and under all this, all the 27 uh, EU states were had to uh, follow it because every insurer who sold some policy at the uh, European uh, Union should uh, follow all the uh, very strict regulations. And in fact, some insurance stopped selling uh, policies because of these regulations. But as a whole, the whole industry all over the world were very strictly regulated. So if they were uh, suffering some losses, they didn't uh, went uh, out of the business. So the regulations, both in the United States and the European Union were very strict. And in fact, we don't hear of any insurer who, who could not uh, respect his uh, uh, policies. Everyone respected it. And in fact, also there were a lot of crying and complaints and the governments were helping them, but altogether, everyone who got some insurance policy got his money. Maybe some later, maybe because the offices were closed, but altogether they respected the policies. Now, in fact, uh, we see that about uh, six years ago, they suffered uh, losses, but we don't see any problems during the last uh, years. Now, let's go uh, deeper into this industry. First of all, we see it's a global market following the previous lecture, we see here that the, in fact, it's if you see that most of the insurers are selling international. They are, like AIG, they are selling in 140 countries. Now, let you understand that in each country, the, the insurance company must respect the regulations of this specific country. I mean, they say policies in their language, they have their own lawyers under the same, under the specific uh, law. So you see AIG, 140 countries, Allianz, 70, AXA, 54, and so on, generally 50. So they are, in fact, international company. And in fact, it's not only international company, uh, it's also holding company. It's not just insurance, they are selling all the financial services. In fact, today, it's not so simple to discriminate be between insurance and bank and other financial services. So this is a holding company of all financial services. Now, if we let us understand what, what's the meaning of international. If you see about the COVID, how it works all over the world. So let's say, for example, the Delta, Delta pandemics. So they compare the Spain, France, United Kingdom, Thailand, India, Indonesia. So the leaders in the United States, they look at all other countries and say, okay, it went down in all other countries like Spain, France, uh, United Kingdom, it went down after three months. So let's expect that it will be the same in the United States. So in fact, it's an international uh, service and not just specific. Also, they sell it under specific law in each country and specific language. It's all combined. The information goes along at the same time. Now, as we say, that the insurance, especially life and annuities, they are long term policies, not only for a specific uh, month or year, like uh, travel insurance, it's a long time. 
and we have to, to look about the asset management because when they say life insurance or annuities, they have to see what will be the return in the coming 30, 40 years, not just at the coming year. So first of all, we have here the interest rate along the last 20 years. And we see fluctuations. The fluctuations are, you see, uh, very high uh, fluctuations. So the, if we look at the last uh, two years, and of course the rate of return is relatively small, but it happened the same. Let's say 10 years ago also the uh, interest rate was low. So the insurance uh, were managing their assets. They are looking 20 years ago as they looked at the pandemics 20 years ago and they hold assets that will have to face also all these changes. So the uh, decreasing rate of return in the last two years, or the, it's not something uh, special. They should uh, face it before, they should manage for it. So if we look now, what the investors look at the insurance, that those who held the stocks or the equity of the insurance companies, what are their ideas? How they estimate the rate of return to their equity when they hold the stock of the insurance company? So let's see if we have in blue the general SP for the big 500 companies and in red the rate of return to the equity on the insurance industry, you see that it goes almost together, you see? the blue line and the red line are almost uh, following each other immediately. Now uh, we uh, made some uh, regressions and we see, for example, that the R square is, is 0.87, so almost the same. So they are going all together. So the investors don't see that the insurance is specifically more risky than all other uh, industries. And if we estimate the beta, we see that it is a very a defensive stock. It's not uh, aggressive stocks. The beta, the beta is relatively uh, low. So uh, let's uh, go back. So uh, the beta for the five big, uh, companies is to show us that uh, insurance is a defensive stock. So we mean, it means that the insurance industry did not absorb the risk of the economy. They are just helping them to pull all the risk. They are like an agent that pulls risk of different uh, countries, different uh, activities, different economic, but they themselves are very, defensive, they don't take risk. On the other hand, they just pull risk. That's in fact the essence of insurance, not to take on themselves the risk, but to pull the risk of the other uh, uh, industries. So if we look at the specific health insurance, when we expect that the health insurance companies are more risky, we see that uh, the uh, beta is the same. You see the beta is uh, less than one, almost uh, the same as uh, the whole uh, industry. So looking at uh, very specific uh, companies, we find that uh, the beta is also very defensive. So uh, what we uh, con can conclude that the uh, insurance in fact pulled the risk and probably helped this or another company but all together, they are not risky. They are very stable. None of them shows any uh, specific uh, losses or risk. And in fact, we started our study two years ago. If we now we are looking at the financial reports, we see that the profits went up and not down during uh, this uh, period. So that's... Uh, what I can conclude from our study, which of course is going on, we did not complete it yet. We are still collecting data and trying to come to a conclusion. So 
Thank you very much. And I will be happy to answer your questions.